with good and evil, though, because Das is with good and evil. Das is the one that's separating, that has the intuition to separate between good and evil. The what does that have to do with knowing, you, well, knowing his wife, though? What does that have to do with Because that's in, look in Tanya, in the end of chapter, uh, uh, the third chapter. Now, the Rebbe says, Vodem Yodas Chava means connecting. What we say about Das, <coughs> Das is not just knowing, it means intuition. It's a certain intuition that he gets a sense, this is the right answer, this is the final uh, uh, verdict. So it's above good and evil? It's, it's above good and evil, because it's actually good and evil is already emotions. You have it in intel and intellect also, but the good and evil starts from Chesed and Gvura. The Das is basically the intuition that connects, the, that gives the person a deeper insight that this is the final finalization of what was running around in his mind before that. Mm -hmm. Why, uh, excuse me, I just want to bring up in actually another, uh, another, an additional uh, detail to this. Why is it that a child is exempt from fulfilling mitzvahs? He's not obligated. He's trained to, but he's not obligated. The reason is because he doesn't have das. He doesn't have this intuition of what mitzvahs are. Because he doesn't have a tilba mitzvah, 13 years old, therefore he's not obligated because he has no connection, he can't relate to it. He'll understand that he's being trained, but that intuition, which is das, doesn't say bin or chokhmah das, this is a deeper intuition. It says in Tanya that a child understands everything, but he doesn't know how to express it. Right? And a child understands everything, or, 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 and or he has to have a bread, till he starts understanding things. Oh. A person does not, a child does not know, to, a child does not know to call his father till he, uh, till he, he uh, right, till he gets bread. So Siddhis explains, he does, still does not know how he's his father. He just knows it's his father. <laughs> it's a certain intuition, it's like a, the, the child is yet in the early stages of knowledge. Knowledge is the deepest connection that a person has with something with what he comes in touch with. So, Rav, Rav Ashlach says that in Tikkun, one of the essential mechanisms is the rising of Malchut to be not. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Malchus and Bina are the two heads in Yudke Vavke. One is considered the mother, one is considered the daughter. Malchus represents the Shechina, Malchus represents the source of Neshama Yisrael, Knesset Yisrael, and therefore the ultimate goal is that since Malchus represents also the lower worlds, the ultimate goal is to elevate the world, uh, lower worlds to the higher worlds. Because every night Malchus descends to refine, to pick up all the sparks that we have accomplished. She got up middle of the night and she brought Teref the, the sparks back, Teref, the numerical value of Teref is 288, plus the word itself, 289. That's the 288 sparks. Every night it picks up the sparks and brings it up to the higher world. Shabbos, it receives a special, the, the Malchus is elevated to a higher level, it receives a special mention. So this is all, this is Bina Malchus, basically, is the two, I then, I, I, they're both identical, but Malchus, the whole Shlemos of everything, the Shechin, or everything is, to raise Malchus to, the, to its ultimate. And Malchus is even higher than all the, all the attributes. Higher than Bina, higher than Chachma. It is a level which is higher than everything, because this is the ultimate purpose. The ultimate purpose is this physical world, which Malchus is the one that channels through everything to this world. And this is the purpose of the world. Purpose, pur um, and the purpose of the whole chain of creation is this physical world. That's, what we're, that, uh, that, that's why this world was created. And that's why the vessels settled in, in the revelation, settled in the vessels. This is the, the main part of the dwelling place in this physical world. And that's why it's called a stabilized world. How much is shy to say stable in this world, but uh, it's still uh, considered a, a world which is stable more than the uh, Elam Ateo. That famous phrase, Tofu, the Bofu, 
Oisoteo Baveo, that's yeah. the, the passage in Chumash. And actually, on, on, that, on that verse, actually, there is a discourse from the Alter Rebbe, which we explained in this last hour, that Teo, the Teo refers to Teo. Baveo, yeah. Chassidus doesn't speak too much, speaks more about the union of Teo. Teo and Baveo is emptiness. But Teo means chaos. For all it's hoisa seyo means the earth was, the world was chaos. This is the world of chaos. Hasidus explains it's referring to the world of chaos, so that, that word. word. So what's this relationship between emptiness and chaos? I, I, I actually, I, never, I don't remember seeing anything. I can just take a guess that, that the, the <laughs> where, are we, where do we fulfill a certain purpose? Where do we see a purpose in, in its, its fullest splendor is when there's a settled and stabilized world. Over there, there was no world. It was just... So the question is, actually, we didn't answer the question. And, uh, I would think everybody would fall asleep anyway at night without, a, in, without any uh, concern. Why is it that this world was created? So the answer is this world was created because the, the purpose of this world was in order there should be a world that follows, that should, that should accomplish something. It should be considered a stabilized world. And as the, our sages tell us, first comes darkness, then comes light. And therefore, Bereisha Hashecha Bahadur Neheira. First comes darkness, therefore was Elam Ateyu, then Elam Atikon. And the purpose of Teyu is, in order that Tikon should accomplish what it needs to accomplish in compensating for this world of Elam Ateyu. So the question is, how was it accomplished, physically? The answer is, the Almighty accomplished it for a short time. But the purpose was for the whole, for the, for the extension of the chain <coughs> of creation. Why is the etz, uh, why is the etz chayim separate from the etz adas? It's a separate idea. It's a separate. It represents a separate concept, which is completely taif. No mixture of good and bad. Chassidus explains that this is the difference mentioned in Kabbalah, in Zaya. This is the difference between. Kabbalah and Hasidus and the Talmud. In Kabbalah and Hasidus, only positive things are discussed. Not negative things, <coughs> no, not controversies as much, if at all. When it comes to the Talmud, there is, we're dealing here with good and evil. We're dealing here with arguments. Two people come to a courthouse, Jewish courthouse. One says, this is mine, the other one says, this is mine. It can't be both. One of them is definitely saying not the truth. So this is basically tevara, good and evil together. This is what the revealed part of the Torah is dealing with. Uh, uh, exclusively the Talmud. It's called Eitzadas tevara. Not that this is mixed good and bad, but it's dealing with good and bad matter, uh, good and evil uh, matters. On the other hand, Kabbalah, Hasidus discusses only godliness. Somebody once came as a you know, yeshiva person years ago, was asking a Hasid, he says, I don't understand. What kind of topics do you have in Hasidus? It comes by us. We have here uh, somebody, Shesh, uh, Noga Hasapora, an ox hit the calf, and, and a cow, and this one hit this one. How much does he have to pay? And this, one, this guy stole, and this guy took, and this guy. He says, We have so many topics. He says, You have one topic. Topic is the, the, the Abish that fills the world, and the Abish that encompasses the world. He says, This is all. This is what's happening really in the world. The, the truth is, it's only the Abish that himself, <coughs> the Almighty that he's accomplishing everything. Now we're trained to know that the whole world and the energy of the world that is being generated in the world is all godliness on a constant basis. So this is basically all these are all details expressing different functions of different, uh, different levels of godliness. Can't wait. Thank yeah. you so much, Rabbi.